you'd be so kind as to ask Father to talk about Protestant prayers. Are any heard by God? If so, which ones are and which ones are not? Well, of course, Protestant prayers are heard by God. I mean, in the sense that God hears everything, absolutely everything. He's omniscient and omnipresent. But if you mean, and I think this is what you really mean, does God hear them favorably? Does God respond to them? Does God find them pleasing to him? Well, the only prayers that God would find pleasing are prayers that are inspired by the virtue of faith, the virtue of hope, and the virtue of charity, or at least the desire for them. In the Gospel, our Lord says, if you, if you have faith, you know, this can be done. And the man says, Oh, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. So he was recognizing that he, he had faith, but it was far from perfect. It was rather infirm, shaky. He lacked conviction, and, but he had enough to know that and to ask our Lord to uh, supply what was lacking in his faith. So if there were a Protestant who is motivated by the virtue of faith, is it possible? Yes. It can be. The church has talked about invincible ignorance in which someone may not know the truths of faith. After all, Pope Pius the Tenth lamented over a hundred years ago in an encyclical to all the bishops of the world that there were many Catholics at that time who did not have a sufficient knowledge of the faith even to be saved. Their knowledge of the faith was so lacking, so faulty. They didn't even know the fundamental teachings of the faith. That's sad and alarming, and he was alarmed. The point being that one doesn't have to have a doctorate in Catholic theology, one doesn't have to be a St. Thomas Aquinas or a St. Bonaventure to have the virtue of faith. The Protestant could have the virtue of faith from God and want to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and turn to God and ask for that. A Protestant could actually have the virtue of hope and hope in our Lord. And a Protestant could actually have charity. Without the virtue of charity, no prayer can be pleasing to God. Any prayer has to be motivated by a love for God, to be pleasing to Him. St. Paul says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Here he is speaking about the virtue of faith, which he's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, faith, hope, and charity. Now there remain faith, hope, and charity. He's talking about the virtues of these things, the virtues of faith, the virtue of hope, the virtue of charity. A distinction is important here. You have a certain knowledge of the doctrines of the faith. What enables you to believe them and hold them as true is the virtue of faith within you. Okay, That's a, a very real thing, that virtue. It's a strength given to you by a special grace from God to believe things that you cannot understand the Blessed Trinity, the real presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, the Incarnation itself. Who can understand these mysteries? Because they require the power of Almighty God to do. Even the greatest of the angels cannot fathom these mysteries and comprehend them. It would take an infinite intellect, just as it takes infinite power, an infinite intellect to understand them, as it takes an infinite power to effect them. <laughs> and so uh, your knowledge of the faith is, is very good. You believe what's in the Catechism. And you have the intention to believe everything that God has revealed and the, and the Church teaches. But you may not know exactly what that means right now. You may not know everything. If I ask you to write out a comprehensive schema, a schema of the faith in all of its details, I don't know that you'd be able to do it. I don't know that I'd be able to do it. Every single thing that the Church has taught in her doctrines throughout the centuries, and it's a lot more than dogma, it's a lot more than defined dogma, her doctrines. Some of her doctrines are defined, not all of them, but they're still doctrines of the Church, as I pointed out before. I even liken it to our Lord in the Gospel. Teaching and everything he said was absolutely the truth and had to be believed with absolute, unhesitating faith that what our Lord said was true. But only at certain times did our Lord find it necessary to say, Amen, Amen, I say unto you. And that's like a defined dogma of the Church. When the Church, like our Lord, made this special point of insisting on the truth of a doctrine that was perhaps being disputed by others. So you can still have the virtue of faith, even if you are mistaken on some point or another. Could it be true of a Protestant? It could be, by the grace of God. 
that a Protestant actually has the virtue of faith, the virtue of hope, and a certain love for our Lord, which is leading him to pray to God for help, grace, mercy. You know, the Church has said very clearly that grace of God does work outside, to keep the people outside the Church, and it considers it actually a heresy. I think it's a defined dogma of faith, if I'm not mistaken that graces of God do go to those outside the church. But I mean, you know, you don't have to be a theologian to see that. How could anyone ever convert to the faith if that weren't true? I mean, it would be impossible. Uh, someone doesn't just bump into the faith and say, oh, I'll try that. Maybe that's true. And then they can kind of slowly convince, convince themselves of it. No, no, no. They're led by grace from God to find, find it. And because God sees that that person is cooperating with graces is being given, and the person, the people who show up at the door and want to become Catholics, generally by the time that they come to the door, they're already convinced that the Catholic faith is faith is a true faith, even before they know everything it teaches, even before they've gone through the catechism. But when people come to the doors and they introduce themselves, they want to study the Catholic faith, it's because many of them, not if not all, already believe that it is true. They know enough to have faith, to believe that it is true. And now they want to, f to fill in the gaps in their knowledge of it. In a sense, to know now explicitly what they already believe implicitly, because they've already embraced the faith by the virtue of faith. So you see what I mean. In answering this poor, poor person's question, he wasn't expecting such a lengthy uh, response. It is possible only when a Protestant can pray with the virtue of faith, hope, and charity. And that's the only time that Catholics' prayer is really acceptable. Except Catholics can be in the state of grace and still pray and beg God for, for actual grace to help them. And, and I guess this, this also should be said in, in that light, too. When a, someone who's outside the faith, the Catholic faith, outside the Catholic Church, prays, <clears throat> the prayer is a, a prayer which is heard by God if it is prayed with a certain virtue of faith, hope, and charity, or the desire for these, like the man who prayed that God would help his unbelief. It draws from God the actual graces when that prayer is sincere. It draws from God the actual graces for that person to overcome the obstacles to faith and hope and charity. And the, the intention of God in giving those graces is to bring that person to what he's praying for. And that is true faith, true hope, true charity. So, yes, these prayers are rudimentary, but they can be acceptable to God insofar as God sees the sincerity of someone who wants to know him and wants to place their hope in him and wants to love him at least that much. And that's because he's given them the graces to want that. And if they cooperate with those graces, then he can give them the graces of the next step to recognize where the true faith can be found and only, uh, only found in the Catholic Church, the true traditional Catholic Church, of course.